Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Russia is really stacking up the gold. Let's explore and find out some of the reasons why. Now, this is an article from RT, and uh, this is that's Russia Today. That's the state media for uh, the Federation of Russia. It was sent to me by Precious Metals Updates, but consider the source, but I do believe it's happening. We actually have seen, I posted a video a while ago about some gold in the Russian reserves there. But gold output in Russia increased by 12.6% from January through March this year compared with the same period a year ago, according to the country's Ministry of Finance. Production in the first quarter of the current year reportedly totaled 58.12 tons, up from 51.61 tons in 2018. Production for the period included 45.95 tons of mined gold, compared with 39.78 tons a year ago, the ministry reported. A company mining totaled 4.32 tons, marking a 21% year-over-year surge, while secondary mining shrank by 5% to 7.85 tons. At the same time, production of mined silver accounted for 223.28 tons, fixing a decline of 11%. So silver mining in Russia has gone down. Russia is currently third in the global rating of gold miners after Australia and China. The Russian gold mining sector has nearly doubled its volume of extraction over the last two decades. The world's largest country accounts for more than 83% of the European gold output. Russian miners are reportedly planning to increase gold production to 400 tons by 2030. The uh, Savatoye mine, operated by Russian Precious Metals Mining Corporation Polymetal, is ranked number one among the world's lowest cost gold mines. The precious metal mined in the field that is located in the country's far east cost $425 per ounce as of 2018. So there you go. Very interesting indeed. Now, it's fascinating to see this happen. We know China and, and uh, Russia are uh, definitely increasing their gold holdings uh, by mining and buying and uh, for their central banks. But... Uh, this, I think, is in part to lead to something like this. How uh, Russia, uh, their new gold rush, could shake up the international monetary system, considering that Russia and China possibly may be considering a gold back to digital currency. Russia's buying gold, a lot of gold. And as we saw from the prior article, they're, they are uh, mining a lot of it as well. Within the span of a decade, the country quadrupled its reserves. Gold buying last year exceeded mine supply for the first time, so Russia is about to become a net importer of the metal. Commentators have suggested possible reasons for the buying spree. Are the Russian authorities preparing for a renewed clash with the United States? And we'll touch on that here in just a moment. And are they attempting to reduce their vulnerability to financial sanctions, or do they fear a homegrown financial crisis? Others suspect something bigger may be at play. The sheer size of the purchases might reveal bolder motives, with Moscow preparing its first salvo in the coming battle for monetary reset. What makes the recent moves especially significant is the fact that they are being replicated in Beijing. According to official data, China raised its bullion reserves to 60.62 million ounces in March, from 60.26 million a month earlier. Last month's inflow was 11.2 tons, following the addition of 9.95 tons in, fe in February, 11.8 tons in January, and 9.95 tons in December. China may actually end this year as a top buyer after Russia. Right now, it looks like a close race. The purchases are unlikely to have been coordinated by Russia and China, but some mutual influence is evident. The two countries expect to benefit from the, uh, the other's purchases, which should be supportive of long-term prices. 
These moves come at a moment when gold has become attractive as the anchor for new experiments in digital currencies. Gold and crypto are a marriage made in heaven, combining the stability of gold with the convenience and security of the blockchain. The surge in interest in the concept of gold-backed cryptocurrencies has raised the question of whether one of the many experiments being launched can aspire to become a leading global currency. Only a sovereign could amass the quantities of gold needed. Does this mean that Russia is considering the idea? Venezuela and Iran have made some attempts already. Rumors have been circulating for a while that Russian authorities are interested in taking, uh, taking plans to a new level, perhaps with China and other partners. Here is how the scheme might work. Money would circulate in the form of a blockchain entries provided by a global platform and be entirely backed by gold, reserves held in international trust insulating them from state interference. Russia and China have openly complained that the dollar is no longer able to fulfill its role as a global currency. And that is the big thing. You know, faith in the dollar is a global currency. You know, the petrodollar was kind of the thing that kept the dollar propped up. But now that uh, oil is being, you know, we're basically a net exporter of oil now here in the U.S. We're not as reliant on the Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and obviously... Russia is mining their own natural gas and, and oil and providing a lot for part of Eastern Europe and, and even Western Europe, Germany being another country there. And so they're not as reliant on the dollar anymore. And, um, and they don't want to be, you know, they're really, I mean, in a sense, it's kind of a two, you know, you have the East and the West. And uh, I think that uh, and you take into account China and Russia, they're not exactly friendly to the United States. We'll find, we'll discover that here in a moment. Um, different private financial institutions would be responsible for issuance, operations, and therefore for ultimate control over the money supply. Money transactions would be processed directly between the users with no intermediation from banks or governments. Russia and China have openly complained that the dollar is no longer able to fill its role as a global currency. It might be true. Rum rumblings of discontent come from President Trump himself and gloriously struggling against a ballooning external deficit. But its dollar is flawed. And would one say that China's currency, the renminbi, those contemplating how the dollar is, is superseded must look at something dramatically novel and superior. The two forces shaking the global monetary system, digital acceleration and geopolitical rivalry were to come together, change would happen quickly and suddenly. This could be the start of the reset of the whole global financial system or the global monetary system. And as, I've, as I have alluded in the past with regards to the IMF and the, and the meeting of the minds there, uh, you know, the world reserve currency, the breadbasket of those currencies, the renminbi is now a part. And that empowers them to come together and basically gang up on the dollar. Financial technology is transforming every element of the existing financial architecture. And there is reason to believe that money will not remain a holdout for much longer. The internet has created opportunities for quick growth of global networks that once seemed beyond the realm of possibility. If certain internet platforms already exceed 2 billion users globally and a network dwarfing the largest national states on earth, what is there to stop a cryptocurrency from taking advantage of uh, the same growth dynamics? You know, it's amazing. We have some social media platforms that have more users and there are uh, numbers of those from the largest faiths in the world. In the end, the Great Monetary Reset is about geopolitics. Traditional tools of power may seem more costly and less efficient. The United States now relies on economic tools, predominantly sanctions, and these are ultimately rooted in the dollar's role as a global reserve currency. With growing reliance on sanctions, however, has already produced a backlash with Washington's European allies were particularly outraged with Trump's decision to leave the Iran deal, not only because they disagree with the decision, but also because the decision was being enforced with relation to European companies, which might be subject to sanctions if they refuse to cut economic banks linked with Iran. I also will note that, you know, millions and billions of dollars have been sent to Iran from the last administration of different foreign currencies, literally cash. Nowadays, that transaction probably would have been done uh, utilizing um, 
some sort of blockchain or technology, who knows, but cash in many ways not tracked in foreign notes, untrackable. Russia and China were interested in exploring the new fault line, but they soon realized their traditional currencies offer no alternative. As for Europeans, they too concluded that a more radical solution was needed, a one seen to facilitate trade while reducing the need for transactions between European and Iranian financial systems. In the race for a global currency, irrespective of who makes the first move, gold will be a strategic choke point. It will be the ultimate check and balance from whatever the system is developed, digital or otherwise. A fully gold-backed crypto digital currency will drive down demand for unbacked cryptocurrencies. Potentially, one currency could become hegemonic. And so gold and crypto will essentially are a marriage made in heaven. So it's a fascinating article here and to see where the future could lie. And uh, I believe the United States really should be accumulating more gold. Even though they're well ahead, the United States is well ahead in gold reserves. Uh, although most of us think that, or at least some of us think that's the case. <clears throat> um, I believe they should get more. And because uh, that's kind of where things going. And considering that what was happening here just in the news today, uh, NORAD has intercepted four Russian bombers and two fighter jets near Alaska's coast. And so this goes to show you it is about geopolitics and about posturing here. Four Russian bombers and two fighter jets were intercepted near the coast off of Alaska on Monday by North American Aerospace Defense Command. Um, the Russian planes were entering the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone when they were intercepted, but they remained in international airspace, never entering American or Canadian airspace, according to NORAD. Two Russian bombers were intercepted by two F-22s, and a second group of bombers with Su-35 fighters were intercepted later by two additional F-22s. It said in an E-3 provided overall surveillance. And there you have it. And uh, so, you know, it's just a little bit of probably posturing, not a huge deal, but nonetheless, it is there. And um, and obviously, with things happening with the South China Sea, with this building of those man-made islands, um, you know, there's there's a lot of posturing geopolitics involved, and it's it's moving in on the on the monetary front as well, on the international trade. Obviously, there's so many different things, and so the dollars pull. And the weight that the dollar may have may be declining in the future as this technology develops. If we don't get a hold of things and maybe come up with our own ways here in the United States to be strong. And I think the way to be strong is to have a dollar that is stable and is backed by a rules-based monetary system and stop this quantitative easing, control our spending, and uh, so that we can have a strong and stable dollar. And, uh, but nonetheless, gold rules the roost for everyone in every single way. If that wasn't the case, well, we would not have reserves. And uh, for our, our central bank, the Federal Reserve, uh, in West Point, Fort Knox, and other parts unknown, perhaps, but these other central banks wouldn't have gold either if it didn't have value as a stable economic powerhouse because that's what money is about, and gold is real money. Post your thoughts below. We'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching, and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.